Hello, Calculus student. This is uh, chapter 4.1, Related Ray Part 2. So in this particular video, we will look at distant problem, uh, in particular when objects are moving. And we want to know how, you know, how either an angle changes and also how the distance between them change. Um, in the first question, we have two objects, two train, one passenger train and a cargo train, and they are moving in a north-south direction versus uh, uh, east-west direction. So uh, this will involve Pythagorean theorem kind of um, distance. So let's read this. A passenger train leaves a station and moving north at the rate of 80 miles per hour. So we can draw the picture right away, seeing that um, one of them is, okay, maybe I'll do this, and we call this Y, and this is the passenger train, okay. A cargo train leaves the same station and moves east. We call X because it's horizontal, and um, X is, is a distance that they are apart, that they that this particular train move is, uh, but dy dt is 80, whereas dx dt is 65. So find the, let's move, read the question, find the ray at which the distance between the two trains are changing after 30 minutes. So we can look at the pictures again, so we know um, we know x and y are changing, we actually know how they were changing over time, but we want to know how the how far apart they are, so let's say this is s. So in order to know, so that means we need ds dt equal to what? So this is what the question wants us to find out. And of course, x, y, and s are related by equations. So the first thing we write is how to relate them. And then from there, we can figure out what the ray of ds dt would be. So the first thing we write about is x squared plus y squared is equal to s squared. And then in order to find ds dt, we'll just do dt for both of them. Now, uh, when we do most of uh, x squared, plus most of the time when we do pre-calculus, we'll say we don't want two variable, right? But in this particular case, it's okay. Because we actually know dy dt. So it is okay to have two different variable, and we just do dt for both of them. So can you see that when we do dt, we have to change this to dx and x squared, and then attach a dx dt at the end, kind of like to compensate the dx. And the same for y, d, it was y, so I want to do y, and I say I'm going to do y squared, but it has to be compensated by dy dt. And then the other side is the same, I want to do ds, because the only terms has is s square and I have to attach a ds dt and that's actually what we want because we we want this at this t we have dx dt and dy dt and after we do a derivative it will be 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt they're kind of like symmetrical you go to 2s ds dt these derivatives are very easy to do so we want this one, so so long as we plug in x, y, and s, and dy, dt, and plug in these five things, one, two, three, four, five, then we, we, can, we can find ds, dt, right? Divide by two, divide by two. As a matter of fact, you can see that ds, dt is equal to x times dx, dt plus y times dy, dt divided by s. Right, so it's a matter of like rounding up each number. X is what? Oh, we want to ray at a certain time after 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, so because dx dt is, the ray was um, the one that go horizontal. X was what? This is 65, right? 65 miles per hour per hour. So 30 minutes is half an hour. So you have to make sure that it is, that's equal to half an hour. 
So x would be um, 65 over 2 divided by 2. And we have dx dt equal to 65. And uh, my y is um, 40 because that is 80 over 2. dy dt, which is just the ray, is 80. And what about s? s is, um, now at this time, we would know uh, actually know x and y now. So we'll say x, uh, this is 40 and this is 65 over 2. So s would be square root of what? 40 square plus 65 over 2 square. And that is square root of 2, 6, 2, 6, 2, 5, 2, 6, 5, 6.25, 5, 6.25, you put in the calculator. So plug in this, all these things plug in here. So our ds dt would equal to what? Um, 65 over 2 times 65 plus 40 times 80 over square root of 2656.25, if you use your calculator, is 103.08 mile per hour. The same as the same rate as the other one. Okay, so that's how we do this one problem. Uh, in the uh, Zoom meeting, I'll do another example where the two uh, objects are not starting from the same point. So how do I do the same, do the DSDT. So uh, another example uh, involving object moving, this is what this one is actually directly from the textbook. If you want to, you can read the textbook also. But it's, uh, it's not, um, it's using a right triangle also, but uh, we are looking at how the rate of change of angles. So let's read the question. A rocket is launched so that it rises vertically, draw the picture. This is the rocket launching. A camera is stationed 500 feet. So now this is not changing. This is exactly 500 feet because the rocket launched vertically. It's, uh, it only changed the vertical position. It doesn't change horizontal. The camera is here watching it with an angle. And of course, if the rocket go higher, the angle would be higher, right? So what they're asking is when the height of the rocket is 1,000 feet from the launch, when so this this just at that moment the velocity is d is 600 so we say at a certain point dx dt is not constant but just at that point is 600 when x is 1000 we say this is x right and then so this is changing and this is um s which we don't need but this is theta also changing so what are they asking is what should be the rate of change of angle of the camera angle of the camera in order to stay focused on the rocket when the rocket is 1000 feet so the thing that is changing is the angle and x so how do we we want to need d theta dt so from the from the question we have dx dt s at a certain point and we want at that time what is d theta dt but x is actually moving, theta is also moving. So we need an initial equation that relates theta and x. And obviously, angle opposite adjacent is tangent, right? We can write the equation that relate them. Tangent theta is x over 5,000. And in order to do 2d theta dt, I would do dt on both sides. Use the original equation to find a related rate equation. So um, tangent theta, um, you can do a derivative of tangent theta by d theta. So it, it would be equal to second square theta but d theta dt because you were doing d theta only. And the same here. So you would say, well, that is equal to 1,000, 1 over 5,000. But dx dt, because you would just move this outside and just dx dt. So what is d theta dt then? d theta dt would be just uh, divide this by um, 
would be uh, dx dt 1 over 5,000 dx dt over second square theta. So this is a constant. The dx dt is 600, 600 that we know. The only thing we need to know is second square theta. Now this is that at that moment at x equal to 1000. So we are finding the rate now. So we can plug in. So when you find this related rate equation, you treat them as variable. But when you are trying to find the rate by substituting, then you can start to plug in things. So when x is 1000 and this is 5000, this theta at this point, what would that number be? So by Pythagorean theorem, this would be square root of 26 times 1000 because it would be 5000 plus 1000. And then you um, do the square root. So this is 26 of 1000 plus 5 squared plus 1 squared is 26. So second theta is adjacent. No, adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. Is uh, hypotenuse over adjacent, right? So be square root of 26 over 5. If you cancel all the thousand now, okay? So this is second theta. So second square theta will be 25, uh, 26 over 25. So we're re ready to do d theta dt now. So we have everything. d theta over dt would be, um, 1 over 5,000 times dx dt is 600 times 1 over 26 over 25, which is a reciprocal. It would be 25 over 26. Okay. So we cancel these. We cancel this is 25. It's 25. We cancel 2 with 3. So it be 3 equal to 3. 3 out over 26 and it's a radian per what is it per per second yeah because the the others is per second so it is radian per second so it's around 3 over 26 upon 1154 upon 1154 radian per second that's how the angle should be moving at that point when the height is 1,000 feet. That's how we do a motion problem.